time now for a deeper dive into the victory and what it means for France's economic future. For that and more, I want to turn now to Patrick Chamorel. He is senior resident scholar at the Stanford Center here in Washington, D.C. Good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Good evening. A big win for Macron, but let's examine some of the factors in this election. Two years into a pandemic, economic issues remain a high concern in France and many other nations. What part do you believe the economy played uh, in this election? Well, it played a leading part, which was somewhat of a surprise because most observers and politicians themselves, you know, expected immigration, crime, French identity to be the leading issues. But the leading issue was purchasing power, which means that cost of living increases for ordinary citizens. And it happened that it was the topic that Marine Le Pen had chosen uh, to, to uh, highlight during her campaign. And so instead of um, the Ukraine crisis hurting Marine Le Pen because she had expressed some sympathy with Putin and been critical of, uh, of the EU as well as NATO, actually, uh, that crisis through the spiking prices of energy and food, you know, turned out to be a plus for Marine Le Pen. You, know, you touched on one of the issues, immigration, and boy, the two candidates could not have been more uh, diametrically opposed to each other. Uh, but still, the hype, it wasn't that close an election in the end. How are people in France faring economically today? And what do you make of the fact that so many people are talking about the far right slowly making inroads? Well, it's true that if you ask people, you know, whether they're happy with um, with the way Macron managed the economy, they are not. Uh, especially again about uh, purchasing power, but it, it has, of course, outside, uh, you know, there are outside reason for it. Uh, there are also Macron's, uh, you know, liberalization of the economy. This is something that's always very controversial in France, and uh, you know, the the beginning of of Macron's presidency was about you know, mostly focused focused on these um, liberalizing uh, measures, and he, his uh, approval ratings went south very quickly. Uh, it's paradoxically, it's uh, just after the beginning of the uh, the uh, yellow vest uh, revolt in the end of uh, of of 2019 that Macron's approval rating started to go up and and stead up until the the campaign. You know, thanks to his good management of of uh, of the uh, yellow vest crisis mm -hmm. followed by covid and then ukraine so much uh, for this uh, president to take on now uh, patrick let's look at some of the pressures that macron is facing ukraine macron's relationship with vladimir putin a lot has been made about what marie le pen believes but it's also macron who has been calling for a better relationship well, sure. I mean, uh, Macron's uh, attitude is to uh, is for an open dialogue with uh, with Vladimir Putin, uh, except that uh, you know, since the you know the discovery of mass graves uh, near Kiev uh, a few weeks ago, he has stopped talking with Putin, and um, I don't think that he's going to resume talking with with him unless you know there are some details, you know, points to discuss in you know in a negotiations. Uh, leading to a possible ceasefire and uh, withdrawal of, um, of uh, Russian troops from Ukraine. Indeed. Well, if nothing else, Macron's re-election provides continuity. What will he be building on? Well, the economy is, is a mixed bag. Um, so I think he's, um, you know, the economic growth is slightly uh, higher than in neighboring countries. Uh, he's taken unemployment down to 7.4%. So that's a point and a half less than when he arrived uh, in office. Is um, of course his Achilles um, uh, heel is, you know, immigration and crime and French identity is being, you know, uh, they criticized especially by the the right and the mm -hmm. far right on these issues. So I think that, you know, if he can uh, reassure people on economic issues on on, of course, foreign policy, uh, as we know, uh, and on immigration, he, he can, you know, he can uh, manage to, uh, you know, to stay afloat in a way. Uh, the, what he has, you know, is, is, is the duration. You know, he has exactly. five years ahead of him, and that's going to give him, you know, 
to give some visibility to what he intends to, to, to do, which we don't know yet, really, because his program, just like the first one five years ago, was very, very vague and fuzzy mm -hmm. uh, deliberately. And so we, we don't really know what his, what his intentions are. Plus, there's, of course, the uncertainty of, which, of the majority with which he might govern, or, or lack of majority, right. after the legislative elections which are to, to take place uh, in June. Well, Patrick, one thing, people in the European Union, those who support it, are clearly breathing a sigh of relief today. What does this victory mean for the EU? It's really kind of hard to overstate. And how are French investors and business leaders embracing this? Well, I think, obviously, it's a big relief for the EU and for NATO and for all of, um, you know, most of French partners in, the, in, in, the, in, in all around the world. But, but especially in Europe, of course, and in the U.S. Uh, what it means for investors, again, is that they have France as a president for five more years. And so there, there is some kind of, a, you know, visibility in what he will do, which we, he will say hopefully in a few weeks. And, um, and, and therefore, I think it's good for investors. You know, Macron has always been a, an economic uh, liberalizer. He, he has uh, been a very pro-business leader. And uh, which is part of the uh, criticism that is heard from both right and left, but he's, uh, he's been uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, you know, uh, ambitious to uh, attract foreign investments, for example, in, in, into France, and he does work fairly well. Um, he's uh, taken down a few you know, regulations and, and taxes, and he intends to, to continue to do so. So okay. I think that business, which has been a big supporter of Macron, uh, including in this campaign, he, he has every reason to be to be happy. Like, <laughs> but they are not the only one, obviously. Well, he gets a few days to enjoy his honeymoon, then back to work and try to please everybody once again. Thank you so much, yeah. Patrick sure, Camarel, senior resident and scholar, senior resident scholar at the Stanford Center. We appreciate it.